Yuwa Novel Harare, atheist gay Israeli author with an Oxford PhD in philosophy who practices vipassana meditation two hours a day, says he doesn't use a smartphone and he's an advisor and speaker for the World Economic Forum. In 2017, he published this book, Homo Deus, A Brief History of Tomorrow. It's 402 pages, all these notes, etc. And this book title is a Latin title, which really translates to man god, man god. That stands for Harari's suggestion that, quote, having raised humanity above the beastly level of survival struggles, we will now aim to upgrade humans into gods and turn Homo sapiens into Homo Deus. So according to Harari, quote, we don't need to wait for the second coming in order to overcome death. A couple of geeks in a lab can do it. Right. Probably that gives you a flavor for where we're going here. Now, before you dismiss this guy, Harari, they'll realize that many elites pay close attention to his voice. His understanding of who and what man is is embraced in whole or in part by many of today's most powerful people on the stage of corporations and politics. And what are those views? Well, let's pick up some of them right out of this book. So here's another quote from him. Egyptian pharaohs and Chinese emperors failed to overcome famine, plague, and war despite millennia of effort. Modern societies managed to do it with, within a few centuries. Isn't this the fruit of abandoning intersubjective myths in favor of objective scientific knowledge? And can we not expect this process to accelerate in the coming decades, he says. Now, when he says intersubjective myths, he's talking about a lot of the religious things. He's talking about uh, our belief, Christianity, Christians' beliefs in the Bible and other uh, monotheistic religions. But Harari isn't claiming that science operates independently and objectively. Listen to this. Again, this is pretty heavy on quotes, I know, but I want you to really get the flavor of what he says, all right? Modern science certainly changed the rules of the game, says he, yet it did not simply replace myths with facts. Myths continue to dominate humankind and science only makes these myths stronger. Instead of destroying the intersubjective reality, science will enable it to control the objective and subjective realities more completely than ever before. Thanks to computers and bioengineering, the difference between fiction and reality will blur as people reshape reality to match their at fictions. This doesn't sound like a very good future, does it? See, Harari's story is that humanity has abandoned subjective beliefs and that by turning to objective knowledge, our species has made great progress. Nevertheless, because of these very advances, increasingly humans will live in their own perceptual bubbles with their own sense of what reality is. So this is the fruit of what is actually, according to Harari, a new religion. How does he define religion? Well, let's get it from his mouth. Here's a quote. Religion is any all-encompassing story that confers superhuman legitimacy on human laws, norms, and values. It legitimizes human social structures by arguing that they reflect superhuman laws. So by this measure, almost everything that Harari says is about religion. He has a chip on his shoulder and is especially dismissive of monotheistic religions. Listen to a couple of these quotes. More than a century after Nietzsche pronounced him dead, God seems to be making a comeback, but this is a mirage. God is dead. It's just taking a while to get rid of the body. Here's another quote. From where do you think the big changes of the 21st century will emerge from the Islamic State or, or Google? Here's another quote. Neither science nor religion cares that much about the truth, hence they can easily compromise, coexist, and even cooperate. Religion is interested above all in order. It aims to create and maintain the social structure. Science is interested above all in power. Through research, it aims to acquire the power to cure diseases, fight wars, and produce food. As individuals, scientists and priests may give immense importance to the truth, but as collective institutions, science and religion prefer order and power over truth. They therefore make good bedfellows. And he goes on to say, it would accordingly be far more accurate to view modern history as the process of formulating a deal between science and one particular religion namely humanism. Huh. Now, maybe I caught you by surprise there when, I, when he said humanism, but that's exactly what he says. See, Harari sees liberal humanism as the worst religion of all. So let's get some quotes from him on that. All right, here we go. Humankind was salvaged not by the law of supply and demand, but rather by the rise of a revolutionary new religion. Humanism. So Harari says humans replaced one religion with another, replaced God-centered belief with a new belief in humanity. That is, that humans shifted from the worship of God to the worship of 
humanity or self. Now, who then is the greatest threat to this worship of self? Listen again to Harari's words. Quote, throughout history, prophets and philosophers have argued that if humans stopped believing in a great cosmic plan, all law and order would vanish. Yet today, those who pose the greatest threat to global law and order are precisely those people who continue to believe in God and his all-encompassing plans. God-fearing Syria is a far more violent place than the secular Netherlands." Unquote. So there's his view, you know, Syria, where Islam dominates, is a more dangerous place than Netherlands, where secular humanism dominates. That's what he says. And yet, by far, the greatest sustained violence, I would say to you, in history has come from belief systems centering on human power over other humans, not on the God-centered monotheistic Christian belief in respecting others, not on doing good and putting others before oneself. I mean, come on. Harari won't admit this, but he does shamelessly state that, and I quote him, the humanist religion worships humanity and expects humanity to play the part that God played in Christianity and Islam and that the laws of nature played in Buddhism and Taoism. Whereas traditionally the great cosmic plan gave meaning to the life of humans, humanism reverses the roles and expects the experiences of humans to give meaning to the cosmos. And he goes on to say, accordingly, the central religious revolution of modernity was not losing faith in God, rather, it was gaining faith in humanity. Now, at this point, Harari subdivides humanism into three branches, and this is really uh, interesting because, you know, uh, a lot of us wouldn't normally think of this, that we're not in their, the humanist club. But he divides it into three branches, liberal humanism, socialist humanism, and evolutionary humanism corresponding loosely to what we might call liberalistic, socialistic, and evolutionistic ways of thinking. Harari especially complains about liberal humanism because he says it upholds the importance of the individual. He especially faults liberal humanism because it holds that, quote, the individual free will should have far more weight than state interests or religious doctrines, unquote. That he finds to be a problem. Harari tells us that the liberal ethic means, quote, if it feels good, we should go ahead and do it, and he says that liberal education teaches us to think for ourselves because we will find all the answers within. His preference is for the two latter iterations, socialist humanism and evolutionary humanism. So in socialist humanism, the party makes the decisions that matter. Think, you know, USSR, right? The thought or feeling of the individual is of small importance. Your ambitions and interests are understood as being determined by your upbringing and social surroundings. Wisdom resides with the leaders of the collective. So, you know, authority and meaning still come from the human experience, yet individuals must listen to the party and the trade union rather than to their personal feelings. So then there's evolutionary humanism, and here's what Harari says about that. Hitler and the Nazis represent only one extreme version of evolutionary humanism. Just as Stalin's gulags did not automatically nullify every socialist idea and argument, so too the horrors of Nazism should not blind us to whatever insights evolutionary humanism might offer. <laughs> and he goes on to say, Auschwitz should serve as a blood-red warning sign rather than as a black curtain that hides entire sections of the human horizon. Evolutionary humanism played an important part in the shaping of modern culture and is likely to play an even greater role in the shaping of the 21st century. So Harari sees the future as evolutionary humanism, or more accurately, uh, transhumanism, because ev if you evolve, supposedly, that's where you go to. That's the next thing on their list is transhumanism. So here's a rough graphic representing these ideas, okay? So we have the, the individualist versus collectivist view. I've just kind of sketched it out here for you, a few biz bits here. But notice I put a Christianity or liberal humanism up there, and then the three variations on humanism, socialist humanism, and evolutionary humanism up there together so that you can kind of see where we go with that. Now, Harari's insight is pretty useful because, you know, few, few of us are members, few Christians are members of the Humanist Club. Few of us would think of humanists in, you know, these three different categories. As a full-blown humanist, Harari sees and analyzes the differences, and his most caustic remarks are reserved for liberal humanists. Which, run, which to him, they represent mental throwbacks. He, he really is critical in this book of liberal humanists. What he sees is that evolutionary humanists, those people represent the most forward-leaning thinking in his mind, and he's, he has hitched his wagon to this adapted form of evolutionism. And if our world goes this way, I think you realize many new atrocities await. 
Would Harari disagree? Well, not necessarily. Listen again. Here's another thing he says in his book. The main products of the 21st century will be bodies, brains, and minds, and the gap between those who know how to engineer bodies and brains and those who do not will be far bigger than the gap between Dickens' Britain and Mahdi's Sudan. Indeed, it will be bigger than the gap between sapiens and Neanderthals. In the 21st century, those who ride the train of progress will acquire divine abilities of creation and destruction, all those left behind will face, says he, extinction. Now, in the last section of his book, there's three major parts in the book. When you go to the last section, Harari sets out to deconstruct the value, even the concept, of the individual. According to Harari, man is not an individual. He is a bundle of algorithms. Already today, uh, Harari points to the Facebook algorithm. He says it is a better judge of human personalities and dispositions than even people's friends, parents, and spouses. There was a study that Facebook did of over 86,000 volunteers who have, who have a Facebook account, and they completed a 100-item personal personality questionnaire, and they found that by using Facebook likes, Facebook's algorithm, this is like a computer program that kind of calculates all these things together, it could predict answers better than spouses. Quote, if you happen to have clicked 300 likes on your Facebook account, the Facebook algorithm can predict your opinions and desires better than your husband or wife, unquote. Harari looks at this kind of thing and he says, quote, liberalism will collapse on the day that the system knows me better than I know myself. And he is looking to a time when, you know, the these algorithms that computers have, they're so effective at telling us what we want, what will be helpful to us, that we'll just kind of start relying on them. And we'll rely on those instead of our own thinking, because the computer always gets it right, and I get it wrong sometimes. That's what he predicts. So here's what he says. The shifting of authority from humans to algorithms is happening all around us, not as a result of some momentous governmental decision, but due to a flood of mundane personal choices. And he goes on to say, in the 21st century, the individual is more likely to disintegrate gently from within than to be brutally crushed from without. In the process, the individual will transpire to be nothing but a religious fantasy. So that's what he says. The individual is really a fantasy. There's no such thing as a real human individual. Now, I may go into this in an, a totally separate video because it's very important uh, the way he's deconstructing the individual. But let me go on here. He asks this question, what then will happen once we realize that customers and voters never make free choices and once we have the technology to calculate, design, or outsmart their feelings? See, his delusion goes so far as to say that, quote, once we can design and redesign our will, we can no longer see it is the ultimate source of all meaning and authority, for no matter what our will says, we can always make it say something else, unquote. So according to Harari, humans are momentary bundles of feelings. He believes that humans have no single unified self. I've got all the quotes. You'll get them at the end, all the reference to the pages here. He says also that specialized algorithms will be able to manage our lives better than we ourselves can manage them. So Humans will still be valuable collectively, but will lose their individual authority and instead be managed by external algorithms. The system will still need you to compose symphonies, he says, teach history or write computer code, but it will know you better than you know yourself and will therefore make most of the important decisions for you, and you will be perfectly happy with that. It won't necessarily be a bad world. It will, however, be a post-liberal world, unquote. So you remember that business we heard, uh, you'll own nothing and be happy. The World Economic Forum had that video that they eventually took down and kind of tried to hide it. Well, that sort of gave away too much. Harari says in 2017 here, uh, your computer will make all your decisions for you and you'll be just fine with that. Really? Yeah. He goes on to say and, he st and state the superiority of this new religion. Quote, Traditional religions assured you that your every word and action was part of some great cosmic plan and that God watched you every minute and cared about all your thoughts and feelings, unquote. But, and then he goes on, and I'll give you this quote, when you read the Bible, you're going to get advice from a few priests and rabbis who lived in ancient Jerusalem. In contrast, when you listen to your feelings, you follow an algorithm that evolution has developed for millions of years. <laughs> I'm sorry, let me keep on and that withstood the harshest quality control tests of natural selection. Your feelings are the voice of millions of ancestors, each of whom managed to survive and reproduce in an unforgiving environment. Your feelings are not infallible, of course, but they are better than most other sources of guidance." Unquote. 
So I'm trying not to laugh, but he says, your feelings are more reliable than, uh, than the Bible. He says, your feelings are the voice of all these ancestors, you know. Well, wait a minute, that, that sounds, you know, sounds kind of Carl Sagan-ish, right? But that is high poetry. There, there's no basis for that. Anyways, let's carry on to the finish. See, there will be those who fit into this brave new world that Harari describes to us and those who do not. And Harari asks this question, what will be the political impact of a massive new class of economically useless people? And then he gives this chilling answer. And here's his answer, I quote it to you exactly. The coming technological bonanza will probably make it feasible to feed and support these useless masses even without any effort from their side. But what will keep them occupied and content? People must do something or they go crazy. What will they do all day? One answer might be drugs and computer games. Unnecessary people might spend increasing amounts of time within 3D virtual reality worlds that would provide them with far more excitement and emotional engagement than the drab reality outside. Yet such a development would deal a mortal blow to the liberal belief in the sacredness of human life and of human experiences. What's so sacred about useless bums who pass their days devouring artificial experiences in La La Land?" Unquote. So there's his view. Uh, take the people that are he defines as useless people and give them drugs and video games all day long and that'll keep them occupied and keep them from wrecking everything else. Friends, you know, as we think about this, this, this human immersion in hedonism that, that Harari is describing, immersion in hedonism and vice does not change God's divine design for us. God designed humans for holiness and, and for an eternity of social interaction, growth, you know, an increasing godlikeness. We never become divine, but we are forever drawn toward the good, you know, drawn toward the divine. That's the way to true human fulfillment. Uh, right here, I wish that Noah Harari would, would have listened to Francis Schaeffer. Here's just one sentence. That's all I'll give you here. But Francis Schaeffer warned, gave this, and he said this. Although man may say that he is no more than a machine, his whole life denies it. And, you know, Francis Schaeffer wrote most of the stuff in the 1960s and 70s. And he's telling us, you know, at that time, we kind of were comparing ourselves to computers and all that. And we just said, we're just a machine. Schaefer says, you know, everything in your life denies that you're just a machine. Uh, in contrast, uh, Mr. Harari says, yeah, your, your life is evidence that you're just, just basically a machine. Everything's determined. You're, you're determined by your biology. You're determined by your social environment. And on it goes. So Harari embraces this idea that man is no more than a machine, even less that he's really just an algorithm. If Harari's viewpoint takes hold, He's kind of outlining here an entire change in how we view the value of humans. Now, in a 2021, in that year, the news program 60 Minutes aired an interview with Harari, painting him not as an advocate for evolutionary transhumanist views, but as a concerned academic who was warning of dangers on the horizon. But if you read this book, <laughs> this book, Readers of this book could only understand that that interview was an attempt to uh, cleanse or portray Harari in a palatable light. This book is bleak, it is chilling, and it is to be rejected in, in if effectively in totality. Real power always resides where the real facts reside, and the real facts reside in, in the Word of God. Contrary to most of what Harari stands for, there is a personal God who created the universe and all that is in it. After man fell from his high estate as a created personal being, God entered his own creation to restore the fallen race. What we see in Harari's mind is really a, we could say it is a re-explanation of reality. It is a deconstruction of the greatness of created man, and Harari's atomization of the individual is justification for a new devaluation of humans. To the author, humans are mere bundles of algorithms. That's all you are. It is astonishingly superficial to declare that man is merely an algorithm, but this is the this is the dimly lit world Harari and his friends both envision and enact. Now we didn't ask for the changes that Harari predicts to happen, and we won't be asked. 
you won't be asked if you agree with this or not. They're just going to impose these changes the best that they can. We're being directed onward as rats in a maze. Powerful persons who literally do not understand reality are bent on changing the world right underneath our feet. At various points, Harari tries to tell us that he's not necessarily for these things, but that his, his presentation of the changes, when you read it, his presentation is, is giddy and gleeful. I mean, he's just so glad to tell you about these changes. So this future, Harari and his groupies, they very much desire to become our reality. His vision is the bleakest and most chilling, uh, really, imaginable. And while we should be thankful for this, uh, his insider peek into the mindset of the current globalist cabal, we should realize the events of recent years are only the beginning of a remarkable civilizational shift. It is a delusion at one and the same time making man God and making him nothing. This vision must be rejected in totality. His humanist religion has nothing for man but self-destruction. So that's my book reaction. Noah, Yuval, Harari, Homo Deus, we're all gonna be gods. No. This is a peek into, into crazy stuff, a total remaking of the world. This is Genesis 1, all done all over again. This is the trans, the technologist and transhumanist and technocrats and the government leaders. They want to remake our world into something like this. And, and they're, they're part way through. They've got part of it done. And friends, I have to say, uh, they're going to break a lot of stuff before it all comes to a grinding halt. But you know what? There's, a, there's better answers, and I'm not here to... Uh, expound all the better answers because the, the, this whole thing is, I'm telling you, this was the, this is my book reaction to Homo Deus. I'm just gonna leave it there for now. Quite a look into the mind of the technocrats. Uh, surely he is, he is as technocratic as anybody. And uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Think of making man God and at the same time you'd take him down and make him into nothing. I mean, how is there any coherence in that? But then again, you know, when you depart from God's truth, and you will wind up in the craziest of places. And that's where he is. And he says already that the Facebook algorithm, I certainly flubbed that up. Harari outlines not only an entire change in how we view whom we view. We should realize that he, the, he, 